Welcome back, everybody. I know you missed our pretty, pretty faces. It's only been three minutes, but I'm clingy and I missed you too. So I'm really happy you're here. <laughs> wow, we're starting things off on that foot, huh? <laughs> Somebody make me a host for a ship for something one day. I have really good, I have really good pickup lines. Um, but what's up, guys? Welcome back to promotion and relegation. We just saw a sweep and a half when it comes to the Glazers and Resonate. I did not forget their name this time. It's been clicking with me lately. But of course, I'm Gompers and I'm here with Marks and we're super, super ready to see what that next game is going to look like. Yeah, I mean, we just got to wrap up Ascent, which was Resonate's map pick. And uh, well, we got to see the Glazers more or less just roll over them. And I think once again, the name of the game was just utility usage uh, coming in from both these teams. The fact that they brought a Sage instead of a KO meant that the only flashes available were that paranoia from the Omen. And so you see so many of these replays where the Glazers, they're just watching them walk in one at a time, securing multiple kills and just catching them in so many different off angles. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the trades for Resonate not being able to come through that effectively, meaning that that scoreline is what it is, which is 13-3. 13-3 <laughs> scoreline is... <laughs> Man, absolutely insane. If anything, it kind of looked easy uh, to some extent for the Glazers. It's like, I, I mean, we're seeing some of the clips here. They pretty much just wide swung angles, got nasty shots like the one that we saw coming through from Zachary. And they didn't feel the need uh, to really have that util potential and, and utilize that. I mean, there was one there was one instance where I, you guys saw it in the highlights where the pop flash came out from the KO. And then we got to see some really nasty 3K coming through from TG to keep themselves, uh, you know, from from giving another potential round to resonate. But it's stuff like that that just kind of carries this team. And hey, again, confidence is key. And I feel like TG just have it. Yeah, I mean, they're also coming off their last series feeling nice and hot. They walk into this one and it looked relatively easy for them. I mean, maybe that was just Resonate not being as warmed up as the Glazers into this one. But once again, that was their map pick. And I mean, the Glazers just made it look like their home base. It was an incredibly one-sided map. It truly was. <laughs> I think that's um, as well as the fact that I believe our next map is what? Sunset. So uh, a map pick that kind of works in favor for saw myself for a split second <laughs> fell in love all right but i feel like <laughs> oh. i need to stop trolling i need to stop trolling but i <laughs> I, I i do believe we're heading over to sunset for that next map and it is a tg pick um we yeah. did get to see tg quite a bit going up against thinking man he was he was super super strong map for this team especially with zachary settled on utilizing that op right even whether it be on the attack or on the defense so i would say i'm a bit afraid uh especially with the synergy <laughs> i do feel like maybe it was the composition as well the resurrections were great and i mean I, I felt like they really did work in favor but a lot of the time the executions were kind of lacking and maybe just with a little bit of a switch up of of characters we could see a change there yeah 100 like even the glazers on their defense there obviously we see Ange being at the top as the mvp Ange was in so many positions and just kind of like swept through systematically like oh one head two head three head okay i've done my work and then at that point, there's only two people left, so the rest of the Glazers could clean up. But a lot of the defense coming in from the Glazers, which was a majority of their rounds, was them just playing very patiently and not falling for any of the mind games that Resonate was trying to throw at them. They were doing a really good job at trying to listen for information and play properly and at least secure a couple of kills if they were going to go down, which was such a huge impact, allowing that defensive half to just be so one-sided. But like you said, I mean, I think that if Resonate do equip themselves a little bit better and play a little bit more focused around their utility, like their aim looks really good and they were doing a really good job at just kind of moving in and sweeping sights whenever they had the upper hand on the Glazers. They were just getting out utiled on all of Ascent. They truly were. Out Odin as well. A lot of the shots uh. that we saw were because of the Sova Odin. And honestly, it did it did prove to be a pretty tight hold. There wasn't a lot of flash util other than the fact that they did have that paranoia too. So it really did feel like they were lacking in a sense. And execution wise, it really just kind of fumbled from there. Defense wise, they didn't have any early information to, to really gather. It felt like even though they did have the Sova, I wasn't seeing too much aggression uh, really moving forward. But of course we have Sunset and Sunset is a map where if you're not getting information, you're getting stomped on. So we're gonna have to see some sort of force there um, for this map pick. Of course, the 
Blazers winning out in a set 13-3 and potentially closing things out uh, in a 2-0 and sweep. But of course, we have to see confidence is booming. But of course, revenge is looming. And I know for a fact <laughs> that Resine definitely want to keep themselves in the game. <laughs> yep, it's in the same things. <laughs> <What's>, <laughs> that, one, that one was good. I have to give you that. But once again, this is to either qualify or unfortunately get dropped out of the midseason. And so this is a really important game right now because Resonate, they're so close to being able to qualify. The Glazers fighting for their spot to maintain. And yet they're the ones who are right now set up for success. We talked a lot about Sunset in our last series because the Glazers, not necessarily their favorite map pick. They picked it into Thinking Men, which the Thinking Men really like Sunset. And yet the Glazers, they look yeah. really good on it. And so I think that that confidence is the reason why we're seeing this map get picked right now, because they know what they're doing. They've got the protocols down. They're feeling confident. And it's going to be up really to resonate to show us whether or not they can contend with the Glazers here. The Glazers, I think, I think there's potential. I mean, it's not like they didn't make that this, this, my mic almost fell. They didn't make this spot for no reason. Yeah. Um, and I, I truly do think for Resonate, it could just be the jitters. Again, you're knocked down to the lower bracket. There's a lot more confidence in your gameplay when you know there's a, some sort of level of solidarity. Like, okay, I get knocked down. Woohoo, I'm down in the lower bracket. But now it's um, it's serious. And at, at this point, you're also fighting for that, that last chance. This is it, right? Like, if you lose this out, you're done. And you've already worked so hard to, to get up here from, uh, you know, from Premiere. So it's one of those things where trying their absolute best and I give them kudos for it, but they have to step it up this game or else it, it's all for nothing. Yeah, and so let's take a look at what we can kind of pull off of the last series where we actually got to see the Glazers uh, come into this one and we're gonna be seeing the exact same composition most importantly here, we're going to be seeing a drone come out onto the breach and Riku play this Sova, which is a little bit against the meta while Resonate are going to be just locking in what you would expect to see for most teams on Sunset. And this time, Gompers, a lot more flash potential. And that makes me a little bit more excited because like I said, I think that they are really good mechanical players. And so having that little bit of extra utility to enable yourself to get set up for those kills effectively this could be really good for Resonate here. I think for Resonate, I do like the composition. I do I do mess with it heavy. I, I think that it is going to put in a lot of the good work, especially with the KO now coming in. Um, interesting choice on the KO, I, I will say, I, especially with the, the, the way that the double initiators are kind of, kind of working around. I definitely feel like you're gonna have to compliment each other pretty nicely for this to work out um so definitely keeping in mind just trying to make the util work um as i feel like that was the main the main issue from before as for the glazers i mean they pretty much just kind of ran with the punches one out the shots Ange and drone were really killing it in terms of taking 1v3s dude and yeah. that should not happen uh, realistically it was just a lot of like one-on-ones constantly coming through from resonate so definitely dumbing it down on that as well yeah, and one thing that I'm really excited to see on this map specifically is going to be Drone and Zachary kind of just playing off of each other, uh, especially with the Glazers starting us out on the defense. The fault line and the paranoia from the Glazers is always so effective, and then immediately they're able to follow up and get kills off of it. This time resonate, though. They're walking up through B. Nice, slow, and steady as uh, the execute is about to get underway. They tried to take out more than they actually did. Take out some of the U tool already settled down by Spike planted. The Cypher here, Precision alone. But even then, pistol round, kind of a 50-50 gamble. Nobody's already coming around in the flank. And the site's already cleared up. This is so interesting to me, how people just go to the extremities to fight this down. And I'm assuming it's because it's, it's kind of it's just a little bit harder. Uh, to really funnel yourself in and, and maybe try to take some of these shots down, but Andrew's proving One enemy that this is the best decision for a team like Resonate, keeping themselves down, and especially now with a flank coming through, taking in that one to O. Those are good flashes. I'm gonna call a spade a spade. Resonate <laughs> using the flashes so effectively there because the Glazers were just caught out into the open, and sure, they were going around trying to win just the 
head to head with the pistols, but a bit of flashes allows Andrew to be able to find just a couple more kills. And then at that point, especially on the pistol round, the numbers mean that much more. So a nice little play there from Resonate, just going fast and wild onto B. Didn't really have to worry about any of those tripwires as well, thanks to a lot of that raise utility. And uh, they just kind of take things over. So the Glazers, well, not a great position because this is going to be Resonate running it back onto this A site. And uh, the Glazers got to get themselves around. Oh, the flash set out and Andrew set out for blood. Are you looking at the back of sight and it's precision to go down first. Unfortunately, not going to be able to play with some of their util and gone as well. But then out comes the time for the TG to try to find a way in. Uh, regardless, it's going to be pretty hard. Zachary having some of that damage util they can pull through, especially with some synergy there from the util alone. Yeah, but not going to happen. Just waiting for the Essex frags and wanting to get things over with quickly, but surely. At this point, it almost looks like the Glazers are just waiting for the spike explosion to happen. Maybe find a pick here. There, Kaho, though, able to find one, able to find two. Close to getting the neural theft online, and Ange at least able to trade that one back before they will die to the spike. So, very clean round coming out from Resonate, as we also too get to see them carry quite a few of their weapons into this bonus. So, this was like the best case scenario despite losing Kaho. Yeah, huge kind of pickup from the Glazers to bring themselves back in the game, though. And Resonate. Again, there. flawless. First two rounds, that is such this a quirky here. placement. Uh, <laughs> but I like it. <laughs> I guess I'm just so used to, like... <laughs> it's There's just an open middle. <laughs> All I'm saying, though, I feel like one blast back could kind of do you dirty there, but regardless, it's going to be fast from Resonate this time. Flash going to the back. This is of an interesting strat here, Gompers. Oh, and they push themselves up. Andrew is feeling confident and cocky. Unfortunately, Ooh. sometimes it doesn't work out for the best, but TG trying to really pack in. Refract potential come through from Resonate, and they do manage to find themselves that 3-3. So at the end of the day, still having some of that player, possible player advantage, especially now with some of that damage already taking place. Fragment to try to back. Maybe even eliminate precision. Not going to work out, though, especially with tons of util still settled down in B. And I think this might work if they put up that smoke screen. I mean, they might just be able to kind of catch somebody out there. Else, too, I just want to mention the fact that that cypher camera is still around. Oops. That's a little bit of a misplay there. But the cypher camera still around is going to give that information that someone might be coming around. As long as that cypher can sc scope it out. They've destroyed it. They have a big potential to try to get a sandwich in. Cam still watching down behind. And of course, two players already downed. And TG feeling pretty good about the circumstances that they were put under. Yeah, big plays. Um, I do want to see that that those, those trap wires in action, though. I think the point is that when you get scared, you tend to move to the corners. Yeah. So I think that's what he's going for, but. I think also too, like if a raise is satcheling in onto the site, especially with that angle, like you're going to get caught by one of them just in the verticality that can kind of happen, which could immediately just shut down the raise push moving forwards there. And weird little round to talk about, because I do think that resonate on their post plant got a little bit too ambitious and we're hoping for a couple more timings for the Glazers because they were more or less playing together. A lot more easier for them to be able to get that trade and Angela's arm was spotted out by Andrew and uh, no, Knife gives no info. Oh yeah! My Regardless, God. Angela's ready to pull that paranoia through. Does manage to break down the ultimate there coming through from the gecko and it doesn't have a lot of impact for the time being. They're Gonna be able to recollect that and maybe pull through with something else. The well, resonate feeling pretty comfortable for the time being. Yeah, already erupting. Andrew finding two off the rip. Thrash now finding another one as well, and it is beautiful. Resonate looking way better than they did before, especially on a map like this one where TG kind of favored to win this one out though. Three to one. Resonate coming back to it. 
And now I'm not saying that I was right, but once again, what I, it looks like would Resonate have their utility available for them? They're looking so good on these frags. I mean, obviously things can go a little bit more chonky, but in the overall just gunplay that is going down when they've got, when they're on even ground with the Glazers, they're looking a lot better. I liked what Drone was trying to do there, go all the way back around and then try and set up the fault line to get that working. But Resonator just playing like a storm. They're just running through and finding the kills that they need to, thanks to the utility that's now available to them, Gompers. Trying to use that util for the greater good. <laughs> greater good Doesn't. of your team, of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. Unfortunately, yeah, Precision seems like they're they're trying to be better than this team alone with the aim. With TG with a backup there, and not looking like they're going to be able to win that one out. But I do like the outlaw from Riku. Unfortunately, though, the way things are working out, especially with a plant coming down at B, I'm not so sure that's going to work out the way they planned. Yeah, I mean, at this point, too, the Glazers, it, the spike is so far away. I don't know if you hold on to this outlaw just because it's a little bit of a strange buy here. But honestly, Resonate, I got to commend them because... You know, they were expecting, okay, if we get the spike down faster, you're just going to assume we're going to be flying in hot. And uh, that allowed for a very quick pickup kill at the start of that round. And Riku at least able to get one here. Looking for the next one. Conti is going to shut that one down. Resonate starting to really run away with these rounds. Also, too, now Conti is going to have that null command online, which could mean for an even faster take. And Resonate putting themselves up on a pedestal here. I I will say looking a lot better than the previous map. Um, obviously so. I feel like they're a little bit more in tune with the agents they're playing as well. I don't know. The Sage kind of felt slightly uncomfortable, to be completely honest with you. Yeah. Um, so did some of the other agents. Uh, maybe it was just the map of Ascent. Despite that being the map pick of theirs, but... Obviously, timeout coming through from Glazers, definitely pressuring them into a position they do not want to be. And let's take a look at how this next round might play out, because the Glazers are going to have full weaponry coming into this one. Uh, same going to be the case for Resonate. Obviously, when you win two rounds in a row, your economy is looking pretty darn good. But what's more interesting to me is the amount of ultimates that are going to be on a line. Right now, if I'm Resonate... I understand how this is going. You want to continue to get that ball rolling. You want to keep on pushing the snowball down the hill so it gets even larger. Except there's a lot of alts on the other side that you're going to have to contend with. And so what you want to do is you want to use your ultimates as many as you've got to try and win out this round. And if you're the Glazers, same thing, but you want to at least draw out all of the ultimates from Resonate because that could make a huge difference moving forwards. This is going to be that hot button round to see how this half can continue to play out here as uh, there's a lot on the table right now. Yeah, they gather early information outside of A, which leads to an interesting reposition. Some pings moving forward, but mid site for resonate a little bit more appealing. Thanks to that camera being set up on me as well. It's a lot more information. I say that as it immediately goes down. What's more important as well is we're seeing the anchor of Ange on that A site with the fault line getting ready to go. Set up the trap just in case. Smoke could be going down. But at this point, if you're the Glazers, you must have an inkling that it's either going to be a mid or B side hit. And given the knife just got tossed out there, I imagine the Glazers must be aware it's happening. I know exactly. So pushing themselves forward, but it seems like even then, maybe the showstopper would do some of the work. Resonate just won't let go. And a 2v3, big possibility. I mean, tons of you till settle down from drone. So we have right Flash and a fault line to use. Is it going to be utilized, though, especially now with the buddy system coming through, having to check the left-hand side? It's so many players there, but the timing. They don't catch them out. They're still waiting for it. 34 health on Ange because they got just a bit too greedy and Resonate might just be able to pull through with maybe another 5-1. Fighting for their lives, still waiting in the backhand corner, but time is of the essence and they just can't do it. 
right call being made here. Move out. Oh, no. Can't even save the operator. Bellis denies that one. And honestly, that was a very tough round. But it was such an important round for Resonate to win. At least the Glazers are able to get all of the ultimates out of their pocket. Nothing available, even though KHS is close to getting Thrash back online. While the Glazers, they still got all four of their ultimates. I'm not going to lie to you, Gompers. I think that that would have been the round to do it, but I think that with the speed that Resonate were going for, there wasn't even an opportunity, really, for the Glazers to really respond. Resonate, that using their good. ultimates, just completely dominate the site. That as a result, those ultimates just kind of sit pretty in your pockets. As, uh, once again, the Glazers are going to be sent back onto a save. Sheriffs across the board, lots of ultimates, but it's just still not favored for them this round. Trying to see what they can accomplish at this point, but already with that being said, a, a trade off down inside of mid. Semi info gather there, resonate now. And we're really trying to make some sort of push forward, but it seems uh, almost impossible to get past this team without finding somebody and getting picked off. Yeah, I mean, it's just so slow right now. They've got no information as to what's happening. And so the Glazers are just kind of guessing which site to go to. I mean, if you look at that top part of their mini map, you, you see that they're moving around over to A, moving around over to B. They just don't know what is happening. And well, with that information, I think they're going to be aware of it this time. Where is everyone hiding? Spike planted. They're looking to pick themselves back up. Zachary finding some sort of showstopper. Push forward, though. There comes. I mean, something else, maybe paint show. To kind of push back, but it's beautiful. Already resonate, still stuck around the back, but it's a 4v2 and a potential to bring things back in what? seconds. It's over. I think they were looking for those types of opportunities on Ascent, if I'm being honest with you. Unbelievable stuff just at the end there. And on top of that, too, we saw the Glazers. They had the utility to make that one work. Paranoia comes through. Unfortunately, nothing happens. And... It's going to be Andrew getting the collateral and KHS sweeping up the rest. Let's resonate. They're just running away with this map now. And a couple of ultimates get expended on that last round for the Glazers. Not necessarily the best position, but given the fact that they were up 4-2, to two, they should have been able to get something. And already Andrew going in deep gets punished, though, by Zach. That just ended the life of Andrew. And they're just looking for revenge at this point. Man, they, they fed into the hands of Resonate so easily within the last round. They do not want to do that again, but it seems like Riku now trying to pull through with an off shot and a half. Not going to happen, though, especially now with some sort of contest coming down to the extremities of the B site. Everybody else wanting to peek around and find something, but they can't. And a slight back off coming through from KHS. It's such good protocols, immediately tossing out the paint shells, giving yourself a chance to back off here. And then you can see just playing off contact. Fault line's still available, and you know they're just itching for an opportunity to use it and get a lot of stuns to sweep out and kill. But to, the, to Resonate's credit, they haven't even given up those opportunities. As soon as the information is usually given, they're more or less moved up. Precision, though, this is going to be a good spot. And keep himself in a good position. Now Molly pops out, and I'm a bit afraid because we've seen before the collateral that happened with Resonate, and they were able to bring things back. But even then, Ange fighting for this and precision with the util alone, making sure that they're going to be playing off that. But they know who is just within the smoke, and already a sandwich moving forward. Drones life saved by, I mean, a heroic act alone. And it's up to KHS to keep this team alive, but with 10 seconds left. There is absolutely no possibility to try to take the spike back. Just looking for a pick to end things off. But finally, TG, putting themselves back on the board. Yeah, and see, that's what I like to see from the Glazers. That util combo that kind of comes through. Um, that's the reason why you want to bring up Reach onto this map. It, it just hasn't found the opportunity, really, to crack open dead. any of Resonate's plays. And as a result of that, it, it slowly is not that useful. But, of course... Yeah. This Just got to find the right time at the right place, and it could be devastating. We're seeing this time resonate. Swap things around to A. We've seen them go extremely fast previously. Imagine we're going to be seeing something similar as well. Precision is going to have a lot on their hands. 
Definitely might be the case, but I'm pulling forward with. I mean, the boom bot not going to be able to find anything, especially with the A site not very heavily contested on the defense. Looking more for a retake potential. The plant coming down. Now that gives little to no time for TG to bring things back. Velus, lack of information there. But of course, some of those pinks coming through, so they know where Kaho is. Going to be able to push him out in a beautiful combination of everything combined. And there it goes. TG looking for more. And it might just be able to happen. Zachary, beautiful, Nate. Once again, to push back. And it's Conti just getting taken down again with a 3k. TG are back into it, baby. That util combo was sick. I mean, it was just the perfect spot for the paint shells to land just beside the aftershock. And then on top of that, too, in all of the chaos, because sure, they aren't smokes, but when a lot of things are flashing on your screen, you can kind of go, you can kind of miss some sound cues, kind of miss how things are working out. Zachary flies in just behind Andrew and is able to secure the kill there. I mean, look at this, just excellent satcheling kind of coming on here. Andrew had no idea what was going on. And yeah, just a very clean retake coming in from the Glazers. I want to see them do this more often. I think that actually that's where they look their best on their post plant. You know, we've seen Resonate try and punish things where they push out a little bit too much, but that has consistently not worked out for them where the Glazers are ready to punish them. And so now we're seeing Resonate group up a little bit more, play a little bit more huddled together, which is when the Glazers utility is really going to shine. I mean, we saw it that last round, and I'm hoping that the Glazers are starting to recognize that and play around that utility just a little bit more on that retake, because that's where I think they look their strongest. If anything, I would have to agree with you and say the same thing. Kind of as well as, like, the B site was just looking pretty dominant to begin with. Running into there, funneling themselves down inside of, um, inside of main, and kind of just taking everybody out one by one. Wow, as they try to make their way and contest that area. So, yes, on the side of TG, strong. definitely looks like they think that's what's going to happen here. Maybe pushing themselves outward. And this is going to be huge early info, too, because you got the hold coming through from Precision on the A site. Yeah, they just go for it. It's actually just to make sure that Zach can get Showstopper online. And yeah, given the amount of pressure that is going on here, at this point, Blazers know. This is Resonate moving in onto here to try and get as much utility as we can out of them before we move in and play that post plan. Still kept up to it. They're running themselves down. Maybe trying to find something in the back and it doesn't seem like it's going to happen. Though Ange with the 4K and just basically ends the lives of many. Resonate cannot seem to hold on after that one. And of course, the confidence starting to drain itself out after that. Man, Ange is, they just step up when needed. Yeah, I mean, Ange was the MVP of the Glazers last round. Definitely feeling hot and seeing that being played right now. Currently 12 kills on the board. Oh, that was such a disgusting flick. But once again, yep. just kind of caught off guard as Resident collapse. This goes here. Does not feel good. Let's do what we do. <laughs> Man. It does not. <laughs> okay, Ange, keep it going. 12 6. Pretty even KD8. Now, at this point, Thrash trying to find somebody doesn't manage to do so. And that's going to be hard to recollect that. They can't even get that ultimate back, if anything. Yeah, I was just about to say that Thrash is really interesting. Usually, you use it to get a little bit more space for yourself. But it seems like that was used more for a fake and. Well, Ange strikes again, but at least to find two here, and the aftershock and the delay even exactly further. Where you are. Yeah, but the ultimate kind of was set out. Oh, and Zachary doesn't know who's there, doesn't even check the oh. right hand side. Though gets out very, very safely. Paint Shell doesn't do too much damage. So when it comes down to Andrew, they're going to have to get the entry into this, but it's not going to be easy. Zachary's still holding the angle, especially alongside Drone and the crosshold proving to be very, very helpful. But the rotation coming in just a bit late. Riku settled down with the op and not really making too much noise there. But is able to try to gather some of that information. 2v1 situation. And of course, win advantage still stuck on the side of Resolve. Oh man. Okay, this is beautiful. Util being used left and right just for the sake of it. It almost hits them as well. Camera taken out. Look at this. Now they're grouped up as well just to make sure that they can swing off each other effectively. Riku still has that operator, but this is such a sneaky play from Kaho. They're gonna peek it. 
Yep, they have it down. That was the only thing you could do. I, I mean, if you're in the hands of Kaho, if anything, I feel like definitely getting the plant Last down and, and playing off, the, off the pressure would have been better because at that point, there was no pressure for TG to push. I think, and I mean, I guess there was some level of insecurity of not knowing where everybody was, but definitely baiting into that just a bit more. Seems like regardless, trying to get that first pick to feel that sense of security. Yeah. And it's so funny because it feels like Resonate's strategy usually is like, let's play nice and grouped up. And it's leading to these moments where they're just lining up and then someone like Ange can just get a multi-kill right off the bat. Um, I'm starting to see though, the Glazers do an excellent job of starting to read how Resonate are playing and they're using their utility appropriately. That KO knife is good though, because that slows things down a little bit more. Well, not actually buying that much space. A lot of utility has to get used by Resonate just to claim some ground. Oh, but Andrew doesn't get anything with the paint shell, man. And it, it does so much to push back this team. But even then, you've lost out on a showstopper. Now you have to try to fight this team back, especially with Riku making a lot of the commands here. And now another one through from Zachary. And it just does not end. Kaho can possibly try to get something through with that. But even then, a cleanup from TG. That just leaves Resonate speechless. Now you got that 6-6. Six to six. Originally, a huge lead that was lit up by Resonate. Just gone in seconds. And I'm wondering if Resonate just had a little bit of a Switching wrong side. read there because they dumped all their utility right off the bat. And so at that point, the Glazers just gave them all that space. They completely used everything. And then they hit them with their own stall utility. After the showstopper has been popped, makes it almost impossible for Andrew to find anything. And then suddenly, Resonate, they've got nothing left in the tank to be able to move on to the site. They try to anyways, and the Glazers are ready to punish, given the fact that they've still got a lot to play off of. So excellent little read there from the Glazers as soon as that information is given. Now, 6-6 six, six in this half, going to be swapping around what was a very dominant start from Resonate, started to fall apart, and now the Glazers, they've tied it back up and they're looking to keep their streak going. Yeah, they've set up the smoke to deter anyone that might want to make their way inside. Spike now finding some of these shots. PG struggling to keep themselves alive, but of course, I mean, some of the damage there, 4v2, but it, it definitely isn't not possible, especially with the 22 health still left on KHS, and no possibility for a heal. So if they manage to pick off Kaho, this could be huge, especially now rotation slowly coming in from Resonate. That was very aggressive right off the bat, but worked out in Resonate's favor perfectly. A couple of ships missed in the night. Sam was able to walk through that one, but now with the bodies, especially on the pistols, it's looking pretty darn good for Resonate. You can see them all decide to just turtle themselves onto B. That's fine. They'll allow the Glazers to be able to get the plant down because they know as long as they keep people alive, they can win this round. Oh, jeez. I like this. Precision takes on a very aggressive role. Last oh no. Standing. 30 seconds and left. that's when you get too heavily focused on one angle. Kind of lead yourself away from the main objective, which was honestly just to try to get as many picks you can to make it easier on Zachary. And maybe even potentially move yourself back over towards A, but it seems like that's not the case now. Taking in a 1v3, installing for some of that time. About to say, surprise the Cypher camp wasn't going up. Maybe just going to use it when they are a little bit closer. But uh, not too much utility left. We do have Velus, at least with the Shadow Step. Smoke can be dropped down as well. They've got the bodies, though, and a Frenzy, too. This should be an open and shut case. Yeah, they're going to defuse it. It doesn't even matter at this point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah wide swing. Whatever you want to do. Still going to work out in favor, especially with that 3v1, but TG, man, losing out another one, giving that 7-6 up to Resonate. Yeah, and Resonate playing aggressively right off the bat, didn't even give the Glazers an opportunity, really, to use their util to try and foil their plans. So as a result, they just get completely bowled over just as that round starts out, but it's okay. You know, there's a little bit of room to play around, given the fact that these teams are incredibly evened out. You'll we'll be seeing a very aggressive buy-up from Resonate this time around. Makes sense. Want to keep that momentum moving forwards here. As uh, they are playing a little bit more heavy flash utility out of this A site. Which I think is going to be really interesting, because 
They can flash things off. They can use their mollies. It should be a pretty solid hold from them, at least to buy the team some time to explore and get more room once they realize the number of players from the Glazers that are moving up onto this A site. Timing. Definitely being the one thing holding back potential from TG right now. They did manage to actually get some of that util pushed back. And now, oh, potential to try to take away Kahu was so big. And that would have been huge if they had pushed that as a group and maybe had found something else there so they could collect that Spectre. But now it's up to KH just to come around the back and that they will. Another one down and another round one. Resonate. They keep going. That was clean. Oh my goodness. I mean, you saw how that happened, but wow, that was crazy. First, the fragment kind of comes in, the flash drive as well. It's forcing everyone around, but at this point, they've already circled around onto the actual site. So you force the people to run into the gunfire of that one member of Resonate starting to move in. So a very clean gun round and a best case scenario for that squad. The Glazers, this is going to be their opportunity to start to pull things back. Keep in mind, we saw this very similar thing happen to them in that first half, so I wouldn't count them out just quite yet. But they are going to be heavily investing into rifles this time while Resonate, they're going for that four stack onto this A site. And uh, this could be a little bit of a brawl. Yes, folks. Been set up. But regardless of that, it's not going to do too much, especially with the push still continuing there from TG. Oh, and the ace set is so free. And I think this is a good adaptation coming in from TG. You know, they originally were looking at that A site, and now that Precision's getting a lot of ground, that's going to completely just confuse Resonate as to where the spike is going. And so it should be a very clean plant and a very clean opportunity for them to be able to set things up. Precision with yet another, making this a lot more easier for Resonate to lose this round, sorry. Yeah, but no with the more. nade already being settled down, Riku is trying to find uh, something spontaneous, maybe to keep TG in the game. But if they don't win this one out, TG just may as well. I mean, co collect the L from this point on because the economy is going to be very, very bad. Not to mention Resonate as well. Just kind of on a roll here. 30 health though. Now Flash. And they've heard the location of where Andrew is up top and just watching. And that's 7 to 8 down to the board for you. And sure, they're able to carry two rifles out, but that's not the best case scenario for TG here. They're also able to get the spike down, which obviously bolsters the economy just a little bit more. Resonate, they did their job on that third round. Now they're going to more or less have the advantage here. We are going to be seeing the Glazers buy up, though. Still have enough money in their pockets to be able to secure rifles into this one. And uh, yeah, this is going to be the first real round where it's going to be a little bit more contested between these two teams. Already we're seeing, though, the Glazers are swapping things up, pushing more healing heavily onto this a site, which is something that we haven't really seen, given the fact that the Recon Dart fault line gets tossed out there, too. They're trying to make Resonate think that they are moving on to A. Resonate with the correct read, though, and playing things where they are. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, even then, it did manage to destroy some of the util set down, but Precision, Cypher on Cypher Showdown. With that being said, does manage to take another one away. So, ultimate settle down. I mean, that's going to be huge information to try to push out with that, but this is so risky. And just, just looking for a push, and is it going to work? I don't think so. Maybe, yes, it will. And they don't even care if they didn't gather extra information or push themselves out to see who might be surrounding the area. Might have just been the best decision, though. 3v3. Now the door being broken. KHS know they're there, but luckily enough, low enough to the point where it's not going to be too much of a concern with Drone being the last one alive and taking out Andrew. That was risky, man. Andrew was really looking out for blood at that point. Yeah, I, that risky is one way to say it. I like, like you got to go for the hero play, though, just because the time was really ticking down there. But quite frankly, I once again, Precision is being such an impact player. 
immediately just goes to shoot that door down immediately pressures the back line and you can tell as soon as that happens resonate they get off the spike they set up and they have to slow things oh, down because they have to respect one. the fact that someone might be pushing them and that That's extra insane. time is just time off the spike which allows tg to be able to scoop up that round this is looking different than how it went in that first half tg are very easily starting to pull themselves out resonate on a little bit of a save this time they've got the thrash available that's about everything that they've got. The ambient sounds of the drone, the, 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 the little boom bot. And this is a little bit of a different look from the Glazers right now. They've not been looking at mid at all which is usually resonate. They haven't even really defensively held it, but this time around, for whatever reason, seems that both the defenders and the attackers were adding a little bit of impact onto mid. And uh, you can see, they think that this is just going to be a go over to B play, especially as soon as that smoke gets dropped down. That's just going to be free reign. As soon as that trip goes down, though, should be the indication for resonate to know what is happening. So over rotation might have just sealed the round away. 30 seconds. Attempting to get the run down, Zachary actually clearing up the site. Now with the 8 to 8, this is time to see who's going to take this lead and who might just be able to run away with it. Because if they diminish, I mean, even then, Resonate just trying to diminish the economy of TG at this point, maybe take away some sort of round from this. But yeah, everybody just running into the crosshairs of this team with a classic set down and now, especially another one from Zachary. 3k, huge. The K just trying to spam through smoke and uh, potentially finding one, but it was Zachary to keep this team intact and alive. And especially now with a the cleanup there, a huge win from TG to take in that lead. Once again, especially from being, uh, you know, pummeled down to the floor with like a 6-2. I will survive. Yeah, that was kind of crazy. Absolute madness here, but the breach utility is finally getting to really showcase why it's so effective. It stalls things out just for a second, allows a couple of those cooldowns to work out there, and then it's just absolute anarchy. The fault line comes in, pressuring uh, Resonate to try and push through, allowing Zach to be able to find one kill, show Stopper online, now, and it all just kind of crumbles in that one little section. But the Glazer is more than happy to scoop up that victory. They're now in the lead for the first time on this map against Resonate. Resonate will have a strong buy this time, and they could potentially get a couple of ultimates online if they scoop up those orbs. But uh, once again, the Cypher at least keeping things in check on that A side. Well, uh, Drone, okay. Gets that, got shut down for a second, but it doesn't matter because the Rolling Thunder, excellent tool for the post by or even just to push people off. Off your feet! Satchel out. Yeah, they pushed that Rolling Thunder down in B, but nobody was there. I like this. They prepared for it. And now, here comes where Karma starts. Because Resonate, they're ready for it. But even then, no utility use to push themselves in. And everybody already down once again. The economy completely drained out of the way. TEG feeling very, very good about the results that they're seeing as well. Oh, yeah. They look like they've really gotten into their stride on some of these rounds. Um, Resonate, on the other hand, while they were looking very confident, they're not playing as strongly as they were in the first half. And it's really starting to show. So, aptly, they are going to take a timeout, cool things off a little bit, and try and figure out what is going wrong. Because... We've seen them be able to use their utility really effectively when trying to push through, but it feels like they're starting to default back now just to like over rotation, you know, just play with their bodies and play for those gun duels. And it's these little tricky plays that we're now getting to out of the Glazers that's allowing them to just come out on top. So the Glazers taking a pretty, well, not demanding, not yet, but it's starting to really solidify themselves as they're looking to close out this series two to zero. I mean, I would want to as well. Kind of going any further than this. It's it's two best of threes that the Glazers have played. Um, if anything, Resonate, we're feeling pretty comfortable. This is what, the first game they played today? Um, you know, in terms of promotion and relegation. So even then, there's there is a slight warm-up in, in the last game. You know, to put yourself into a, a live stream and, and then have to deal with 
you know, the attention of, of yeah. things that you might not be so used to as the Glazers are, as they've been, you know, streamed <laughs> time and time again throughout the season. So um, not only that, but then playing a game before that uh, and, and really having to use their skill and playing a map that they're pretty familiar with. So it, it really does lean a bit more heavily in favor into TG. Yeah, but looking at the P site, now no util other than a cam to kind of watch out for what's going on there. It's this aggressive push. Could potentially get punished. Precision still has, oh, a trap wire to walk off of. That's good information. One, Spots two, out one. Immediately can just back out of there as Ellis goes in for it. But look at that. The protocols are just so good. The fault line comes in immediately and pushes that aggression back. Well, TG, they just take that A site, uh, sorry, B site for free. And the suppression does not catch anybody. That's going to be super unfortunate. Looking at the util, KHS going to prove to be a very, very big help. No when it comes down to getting themselves on the site, the question is, how are they going to use that utility? Now big pressure coming through from Zachary alongside the Hunter's Fury, and it works out for the better. TG. Oh my goodness. And now every time I see TG, I think of, um, thank God it's Friday. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> All right, Katie Perry, geez. Um, no, yeah, I was thinking, that's nah, right. Yeah, you yeah, know. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still a couple days, more days until we're at Friday. So hold, on, hold that one under your back pocket for a couple days. But once again, I think the phrase goes, teamwork makes the dream work. And we're seeing TG really just <laughs> exemplify that right now. Um, just playing off of each other extremely well. They're calling for utility when they need it to come through. The fault line, once again, just flying around wherever. Drone finding so much value, even though not necessarily finding the kill. And uh, look at that. The Glazers were ready for this aggressive rocket play as uh, Andrew's not going to be able to get anything while Hanch has completely gone into the back. It's a little bit of an interesting trade as Resonate looked to punish. I mean, that was an interesting choice. <laughs> Location of TP, but Hard even then, TG. The still managed to push themselves up towards the A site. Oh, and they don't know. I think they're just going for a rotation over towards B. They've done this once. There was one oh, time no where way. I saw them do this, actually. And I think it was against Blin Esports. They get, gave it a big rotate. Got some sort of flank yet <laughs> coming down to it. And it, it works so well. And it, I'm not surprised that they they decided to pull this out so late in the game to solidify that win. Because this is a, a great strat. It's so tricky. And on top of that too, now Conti doesn't have that null command available. And they have to walk him through these lanes that Drone is watching with the fault line. But once again, the protocols, it's just unparalleled coming in from the Glazers. Oh. Dude, Drone is just annihilating everybody that comes into their crosshair. That's like the second time they managed to catch somebody out. But again, the off angle from Zachary that just proves to be so good. An economy drained from Resonate. Match point now as well. And they're going to have to cough up anything that they have just to keep themselves in the game. <laughs> I was going to say, Andrew, the TP back. Now that's a bold move. Let's see how this one plays out. But actually, the bold move was rotating all the way around and completely bamboozling Resonate. Like you said, Gompers, You've seen them do that before, but yeah. that was so effective. I can't believe that also was the, the win condition to force out the null command as well. Resonate got completely fooled by that single, uh, single piece of utility, honestly. They're pulling out all the stops for this one. Honestly, the strats are coming out. That's all I'm going to say for TG. If they get silent, you have to be afraid. And here, silence not really an option, especially with the eruption that's about to occur. KHS getting ready to help Andrew out. But even then, so much utility. Just draining Andrew from the health that has been presented to them. That seems like Pinchel's still not even going to be settled down. I'm surprised they're not utilizing the util that they have here. And that just allows the showstopper to come through. Zachary pushing back the players on the side of B and a possible collection, but it seems like rotation already set down towards A. Oh, wow. That is crazy. Oh, oh. oh no precision with the timing. Just misses it out. He is able to stay alive. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Frisbee does bounce off the wall, but uh, that's more than enough information for the rest of the Glazers to be able to rotate over. Sure, they still have a little bit of a pesky Cypher hanging out, but it will at least secure them. The plant and Zach not done yet. Able to find KHS. Thirty seconds left. Mike planted. Plant settled down. They're trying their absolute best to 
to play with everything that they have, but Precision now. Pulling up the cage to leave Riku with some sort of value, and it seems like there the angle hold is valuable enough, but with one player remaining, it might just be GG. And that's exactly what it is. Congratulations to the Glazers, because this team is qualifying to challengers. Yeah, they're, they've solidified their position in the Midseason Cup. Like we talked about this entire time, uh, they've had a little bit of a rough start in Challengers Series 1, but the fact that they, they are looking pretty darn good, able to maintain their position, and you can tell that it's starting to click a little bit better with this team. They aren't looking as scattered or lost. And once again, I think they've done a lot of work at making sure that their utility usage is working very well together and i think we're seeing that completely cash out well the glazers i mean they fought for another chance um <clears throat> and it seems like they did end up getting it um obviously they didn't have the best time in the regular season and i think that the, the best part about I guess this whole entire experience is, you know, it's kind of cutthroat and, and you get to experience what it's like to be on the edge, right? To actually not be able to keep your spot um, and and fight for it down in the lower bracket run. So they made a hell of a run and I'm super, super excited to see what they can do uh, moving forward and the improvement that they make because I definitely feel like they made so much improvement already moving forward in this relegation and promotion. And overall, just like in general, all, all the players definitely looking a bit more synergized. I can see the set plays that they're wanting to push through, especially like the, the repetitions within them as well. And I, I really am looking forward to seeing what else they're going to be cooking. Yeah, and on top of that too, like, you know, obviously we got to see the thinking men earlier as well as Resonate come in onto this one. And these are really good teams as well. So you can see that a lot of people are going for broke and really trying to make this one happen. Once again, Resonate coming from Premiere. And honestly, they were very close to being able to secure their spot for the for challengers. Yet they just fall a little bit short against the Glazers as uh, you know what? It, it felt like mechanically they could get there, but it just seems like they need a little bit more time in the oven before they're fully ready to come out. They need to bake. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> no, Resonate, I, I got to say kudos to them as well, because I feel like it, it, it really isn't easy to come through from Premiere and, and go against teams that have been solidified for quite a while, right? Yeah. Especially in such a pro scene, um, you know, because the Glazers, they've been up against people like Moistex, Shopify and stuff yeah. like that. And these are teams that are so dominant in their own right that, for, for example, Oxygen, right? Like you really, M80, you can't compare, uh, you know, sort of things like that. And I think Resonate, they definitely have a big journey ahead of them because they played like hell throughout the sort of whole entire tournament. And I genuinely do think uh, with the results that we saw, they have such, such big, like a big path ahead of them. Yeah, I 100% agree. Like, obviously, as things continue to play out, very excited to see the midseason cup kind of shake down, especially too, as uh, the Glazers are starting to look a little bit more confident in their own individual play style. I mean, some of the individual plays that we were seeing come out from these players, Zachary, an easy highlight drone felt a little bit more quiet on this map, but honestly, the utility usage was fantastic. And of course, Ange from the Glazers. Oh my goodness. So many different opportunities, finding so many kills on this Omen, being in those tricky little teleportation spots, which are just such a pleasure to see every single time. And uh, Resonate, they were really trying their best to go up against that. Andrew doing an excellent job on that raise as well, being able to take two duels down and try and win things out. But unfortunately, it just falls a little bit flat. So once again, just big shout out to the Glazers. Everyone on the team were looking really good. Everyone on the team is looking absolutely immaculate. And Ange and Drone, I've seen such, like, it, it's like star players, uh, to be honest with you, on this team. Zachary is a star player of their own, playing, uh, you know, that duelist role. But in terms of the aim and precision, dude, they, like, these two players were knocking everybody out of the water. And I do have to say, it is crazy um, to kind of see something like that and... You know, obviously they did an immaculate job at keeping themselves well put together on the side of the Glazers and a huge congratulations to them for being able to make it to that mid-season cup, baby. And of course, I mean, thank you for joining me on the desk, Marks. It's been it's been a, a great day. 
Yeah, I mean, it's been a hot minute since uh, I've been around, but this was honestly, it's so cool to be able to see some of these teams. Once again, come up through Premier, things didn't quite work out for them on the first qualifying tournament for Challengers the first time around, and these teams are still on the grind and trying to make it work. And even then, the teams from Challengers, Thinking Men and the Glazers, really giving it their all and actually developing their skills as players and as a team, we're really starting to see all of this come together, and that to me is just the best part of, you know, these types of tournaments. Yep, and to end off the day, I do want to show you guys what everything is looking like, what you may have missed throughout these past two days in the bracket, of course, um, to see what is going on. But this is your finalized bracket, Thinking Men knocked out and Resonate knocked out as well. So you only have Blinny Sports and the Glazers that just so happened to make it past everything that it happened. So, I mean, listen, hey, we might get to see a, a Blinny Sports, the Glazers rematch eventually, and maybe things <laughs> might end up differently because that first day they were not looking the way they looked today oh, is all I'm going to say. Honestly, too, just talking about Blin, I'm super excited to see them go up against some of our challengers team. Of course, they are part of the collegiate circuit, but they've been looking extremely good as well. And moving out from like the collegiate to like the proper tier two, there's going to be a lot of ideas that are kind of bashing their heads against one another. And honestly, I'm just really excited to see that one shake out. I'm excited to see it as well. But as for you guys that were here, I mean, Marks, before I, I had things out, do you have any last words? Um, super excited for the mid-season tournament. I think it's going to be great. Y'all should tune into that one because, once again, super curious to see which one of these players might be able to kind of dethrone some of the more predicted matches that we've been seeing up in Challengers. So, you know, it's Valorant. Things can go any direction ever. So get ready for that. <laughs> It is Valorant, and they can go in any direction. We also have a new patch coming up for those of you who aren't aware. It is already there, actually. It's not coming up. It's there. So have fun with that. Get used to it. It's going to suck. <laughs> but of course, I'm super, super excited to see you guys for the Midseason Cup. As for now, have an amazing day. Honestly, have an amazing year. Um, and yeah, we'll see you guys soon. You fought well out of charging. Remaining. Spike down and we're down here. Enemy down. Cancel. <laughs> My ult's ready. Enemy remaining. One enemy remaining. Clash. One enemy remaining. Clash. Remaining. Last player standing. One enemy remaining. One enemy remaining. One enemy remaining. Remaining. 